Hey guys, hope you're all doing well today. It's Saturday and we are going to be doing a DIY. Welcome to my craft room floor. I know I was down here for one of my Dollar Tree hauls. I have a project on my desk that I don't want to move. I need to finish that video as well, so I'm on the floor. I have a super exciting project. I mentioned in my Dollar Tree hauls, I believe that um, I'm going to be making my own ink pad storage. So I have these pieces of wood here. They're one by fours. I cut them down to the size that I need. And of course I'll put all the measurements down below for you. I've had these 1x4s for a while, like forever. I don't even know why I bought them. Apparently I had some project in mind, but I have no idea. I cannot remember what I bought them for. But anyway, they came in handy for this because I didn't have to buy any wood. So the only thing I had to buy was the backing for it, which is right there. I still need to cut it down, but I'm going to have my man do that because I don't want to mess it up. I had pieces of extra wood for this that if I messed up and I did that I could just recut it <laughs> but that I don't have an extra piece so I'm gonna have him do it so I don't mess it up. <laughs> I got that from Lowe's and it's just a two by two one quarter inch thick piece of wood that's gonna go on the back. I also have something super exciting to show you that um, I also got for this project. This is a cute little table saw that I got from Amazon. I love it. It's super tiny size of my hand you can see <laughs> like I can literally hold it in my hand it's not heavy at all and it's super tiny unfortunately it doesn't work on that or if it does I was too nervous to try it because I was having trouble I was cutting these pieces of wood here and I finally figured out how to do it now but and I was also using the wrong blade but anyway it has four different blades that it comes with this is the finishing blade and then it has another one that says it's for longer and bigger pieces of wood but I was just too nervous to try it on these so my man got me this jigsaw that's what I used to cut these and I was nervous about that too because I've never done anything like that before <laughs> like I like doing stuff like this but I've never actually used a saw before <laughs> but yeah I wanted to show you that and I will show you how it works later I have some smaller piece of the wood the dividers for it that I need to cut still I saved those for this I went ahead and cut those because I knew it was going to be loud plus I was practicing and <laughs> I just didn't want to film that part but I've been using this for a little while now I've only had it for a couple weeks but I've been using it so I'm getting the hang of it so I'm a little comfortable using it on camera but this is my template that I made for my ink pad storage it's just a uh, poster board that I needed something big and I have erased and redone this over and over like I said I've been working on this for a few weeks now <laughs> trying to get the numbers right and the measurements right and realizing that I forgot something and stuff like that but yeah like I said I'll have the measurements down below for you this is gonna be the frame this is gonna be the top and bottom pieces and then these are gonna be the sides and then I have thinner pieces um, to put for the dividers but these are 21 and a half inches you can see there and then these ones are 11 and a quarter inches and like I said I'll have it all down below for you um, of course if you want to make yours a different size you'll have to figure out the measurements so I'm going to have six rows and then they'll be 10 high so I'll be able to fit 60 um, ink pads in here eventually I'll have plenty of room to grow because I don't have that many I think I have 30 something but I'll have plenty of room to grow where I can use them as the other spaces for my inkers and stuff like that. And then I'm also going to have like a little storage box on top that I'm going to make. I made that piece there 14 inches. So this is going to be 12 inches tall with the boards. These are quarter inch or sorry three quarter inch thick. And so it's going to be 12 inches tall but I made that 14 inches tall. That way I have some extra coming up and it'll be... And then I'm going to put two pieces on the side to have like a little box type thing. Yeah, I have everything all ready. I just, like I said, I'm not comfortable cutting that <laughs> yet. So I'm going to have my man do that. But yeah, so I wanted to go ahead and um, I already have the markings on this one where I need to put the um, dividers and stuff like that. But I still need to do these ones. So I'm going to go ahead and move up to my desk and we'll do that. Okay, I'm back at my desk. I'm going to go ahead and measure out where the little shelves are going to go. I'm going to be using clothespins. I got these from Dollar Tree. I already had this one and then I got a new one. So I'm going to need quite a few. Uh, like I said, this is going to hold 60 ink pads. So I needed a lot. The measurements for the little shelves are going to be one and one eighth inch. 
And then the dividers, like I have, I have these pieces here that I have already marked off. I need to cut. This is what I'll be showing you later on the little table saw. Um, I got these from Hobby Lobby. They were just the little wood planks that they have. And I couldn't find one, of course, that was the size that I needed. So I had to buy these and then I'll just cut them down. But yeah, like I said, I'll be showing you that later. Um, I saved that for this video so I could show you guys. These are a quarter of an inch thick. I need to cut it down to three and a half inches. That's how thick the wood is. This is three and a half inches. And then 11 and a quarter inches tall. And I actually need to get some nails because I don't have any nails to nail this. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be gluing it, but I want it to be strong. So I'm gonna be getting some nails Anyway, let's go ahead and mark these out. It's going to be one and an eighth inches for the shelves. And I still need to saw these. I mean saw. I need to sand the ends of them a little bit. The ink pads are oh yeah, three quarters of an inch. So you need extra room for your little shelf to sit and give you room to be able to slide the inks in and out. Let's go ahead and mark these. I'll show you a couple and then I'll do the rest of it off camera. And of course we'll glue those on and then we'll paint it. I'm going to paint it white. Okay, I showed you a couple and you'll be able to fit 10. So I'm going to go ahead and finish marking these out and then I'll be back and we'll glue it together. And then when I go get my groceries later, I'll stop somewhere and get some nails. <laughs> Still can't believe I didn't think about that, but yeah, I'll be back. Okay, I got my measurements done. Put lines across so I know where to put the uh, clothespins. Um, I taped two on just to see where I need to put them before I glue them down. And this will work perfectly. So I ended up having to glue a piece of wood on even though, like I said, I measured and measured and measured. And the funny thing is when I cut these, I cut them too long, 11 and a half inches, and I should have just left them because now they're 11 and a half inches. I ended up cutting them down and now I had to add back wood back. I mean, it doesn't matter. This is going to be underneath the other piece of wood and it's going to be white. So, you know, you live and you learn. So I will adjust that for you guys. It's going to be 11 and a half inches tall instead of 11 and a quarter. Yeah, I will make sure I write that down now so I don't forget and end up putting the wrong measurement. You'll have a little bit extra room on the bottom, which is good because you can, you know, use them for like the inkers or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get my clothespins ready, glue these on, and then I'll paint. But I will come back when I'm gluing them on for you, and then we'll glue it together. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and glue the clothespins on to the end of each of them. I was only planning on making four rows and I changed my mind, or yeah, six rows, so I need five of these. And then we have four, so I'm going to have to go get another one. I was going to use the wood from the back, but it's not the same width. It's only, like, it's a little bit thinner, plus I want it to look more uniform. Even though it's going to be painted white, it's not going to be as thick. So let's go ahead and glue these on. I'll glue on a couple with you, and then I'll just do the rest off camera. I need to make the marks on the other ones, too. I hope you guys like this. This is like a different type of video than I usually do. You know, I just needed ink storage and I figured I'd show you how I did it. Okay, so I got all the clothespins on the outside boards. Anyway, I wanted to make sure I let you know that your outside board to make sure that you put the clothespins on the right way. So this is going to be the right side. You want your clothespins facing with the thicker side in the front and then the thinner side in the back. And then on the left one, same thing. So they're going to go opposite like you see here. These are backwards. So this one's the left side. So it's going to be the clothespins are facing, the thicker side's facing out. And the same thing on your dividers. You want to make sure you mark both sides because you're going to be putting the clothespins on both sides of this.
Okay, so I got everything painted well enough to glue it together. I left the spaces there so that I could put the dividers so I can see where to put them. And then I'll paint around it when I'm done. So let's go ahead and put the first one on. I just went ahead and went with white just to make it easy. <laughs> Most of my stuff in my craft room is like dark wood finish. I thought white would be a nice pop of color. <laughs> isn't perfect but it's my first time ever making something like this so <laughs> okay you guys i got the frame together finally <laughs> took me a while um my cuts were off and so my man had to help me get it straight i mean honestly it's still not perfect there's a gap there on each side this has actually been a very frustrating project and it's all mostly my fault because i was just getting impatient and um even on these my little I don't know if you'd call these dividers, but my little like sections in between that go here. I had to cut off a piece and instead of cutting off little bits at a time until I got it right, I just cut off like a quarter of an inch and it ended up being too much. So I had to glue back a piece on and I actually ended up having to glue back a sliver on the top too. <laughs> but I wanted to show you guys anyway to show you that not every project is perfect and I'm definitely no woodworker or you know carpenter whatever you call it. I just wanted to make myself an ink pad storage and hoped that it would go easier than it has but it hasn't. <laughs> But yeah, so what I need to do now is paint these and then put them in. I did put nails up here, four nails up here and then four on the bottom, or my man did that. I just wanted to come back and show you where I'm at and let me get set up to paint. Okay, I'm ready to paint. I just mixed the matte white acrylic paint and then I mixed some of this antique parchment into it so it's not so super white. I like the way it came out on the frame, so I'm just going to paint one. And I mean, you saw me paint the frame, so I'm not going to paint too much on camera with you because you don't need to see that <laughs> over and over. I got to the point where I was ready to quit and then I was like, well, I've come too far to quit now. And any other project I decide to do, I would end up having to go buy more supplies and I didn't want to do that because I already had everything. I just didn't want to spend any more money on this project, so I just stuck with it. It definitely wasn't an easy project. I've only done projects, uh, pretty much all I had to do was to glue them together or nail them, and that's it. You know, I like putting stuff together, like when I, you know, get pieces of furniture from Ikea or whatever, or Walmart, I like putting them together. I just, you know, I've never done anything like this where I had to cut the wood and everything. I would like to get into it more though, eventually. I remember if I said that or not, but my man got me the jigsaw and everything, and then eventually I'd like to get a bigger table saw than that little one I showed you. But I'm gonna go ahead and just keep painting and I'll come back and show you when they're done. And then we'll put them in. Um, like I said, I'm probably gonna have to put like little shims like this on top of some of them because they're still not tight enough or else I'm just gonna glue them in because they're like close enough to the top that I can just glue them in. Okay, so I have them all painted. I'm just trying to figure out which ones go in what place because some of them fit better than others and certain spots but yeah i'm just putting them in place and i'm just gonna glue them in place and i just wanted to show you real quick what i'm doing i just have to glue or i have to paint the back still and then put it on and it'll be done once i get these in i'll have to paint that section and that'll be it so let me go ahead and put these in and glue them in i'm just gonna put glue along here as you can see there's a gap and that one okay got it all put together i do recommend using a wood filler once the glue dries um to finish it off and then paint it i didn't do that because i didn't have a small enough wood putty knife to get in the little crevice so i didn't do that and the paint cracked so now i'm just putting the back on and i'm showing you what it looks like with the back i guess <laughs> and i'm taking my staple gun and just putting some staples in there all around the edge and I didn't have to put it all the way down to the bottom because I needed a little extra room at the top because I didn't cut my back piece long enough to make my little box at the top. So I just put a bunch of staples in and then I put some glue on the edge I showed you when I was pointing at earlier. And now I'm just taking the two little pieces of wood that I cut to make my side walls on the top. 
So I'm just painting it real quick and then I'll glue it on and then it'll be done. I used my heat gun to dry the paint because I was impatient. <laughs> Okay, you guys, while I'm clearing off my desk and setting it up, I wanted to talk to you about how difficult I was talking about this project being. As a beginner, it might not be so much for you, but I don't want to discourage you from making something like this if you want. It was definitely fun, and I learned a lot, and you have to start somewhere, right? So I'm glad that I did this, and I, I definitely needed something for my ink, so it was worth it. Okay, you guys, I got it all done. Got most of my inks in there, the ones I use the most. All my Distress inks, Oxides. I made it specifically for those ones, but they will fit these size too. You just have to make a little shelf. I just made a little shelf out of a cereal box and then I covered it with some pretty paper. So you just put it in there like that and then you can just put the ink on top. Cause these little ones like this are the VersaFine and like those ones, they don't fit, they're too small. So you make a little shelf and they fit perfectly. So I got my VersaFine stays on, just uh, archival inks, my embossing pad. And then I have some more inks up there put on there once I get some more shelves made. I have two more here, and then I have some here to, that I cut out to cover. And then I moved those over there. So I definitely like this because it's definitely a smaller footprint because it's only three and a half inches wide. So I like having those in there. That way it gives me more room on my desk. I always keep my iPad here usually, but if I need to, I can move it in there now. And then I have that too that is empty for now until I figure out what I want to put in it. That is in a video coming either before or after this one. I'm not sure. And then I put that up there. That's my like ink blenders. My re-inkers are in here. I did get the Scorch Timber, which hasn't even been opened yet. I got it in both the ink and the oxide. It was actually a whole little kit, so this was, it was this whole kit here. And then it came with these too from Amazon, and I'll have it linked down below. It was like 20 something, I forget how much it was, but I'll have it linked down below for you. Did you get all of that? And then I just have that, my re-inkers, my Distress ink sprays, and then my ink blending tools up there. Yeah, I was going to do a whole, like, organizing my craft room and everything in the tour again, but we are actually moving soon, so I figured there was really no point, and I would just do that in the new place. I'm super excited because I've been in this apartment and the only thing I like about this apartment is my craft room. <laughs> so everything else, it's just, we just need to move. <laughs> so I have that there that is also in the video that is in. Um, it's a whole DIY video <laughs> coming up. Been working on it for a while and I actually still am not done filming. <laughs> And I will have all the measurements uh, for everything once I figure out the actual measurements. Because, <laughs> like I said, this was not easy and things didn't come out right. Like, even my little shelves are a little crooked still. So, I still think it was worth it because I definitely needed something to keep my inks in instead of keeping them up there. So I didn't have to get up and climb up. Well, not climb up there, but you know what I mean. I had to get up and get them down every time I needed ink. So, this will definitely be more convenient and i still love the way it came out it's very functional i like it so i hope you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you did like and subscribe for more videos like i said i have a one coming up with some diys so that and that subscribe to the channel for more videos like this hopefully i'll be able to get back into the junk journal world of things i love you guys and i will see you in the next one bye guys